So we've moored under this wonderful tree. And Lauren's just sorting out some of the wood so we can use some of our solar panels. Autumn is still in full swing here. And this canal just gets nicer and nicer by the day. The beautiful part about being here is all the trees and the leaves, but it does mean we get a lot of nature's confetti on the roof. And we've got to clean up. Hello, I'm Adam. I'm Lauren. And this is Shanti. We all live together on board our 59 foot narrowboat. Join us as we show you what our day to day life is like living on the British waterways. For the last few weeks, we've been cruising along the Llangollen Canal. It's one of the only stretches of canals that crosses into the border of Wales, and it's been our all time favourite canal we've ever been on. The canal is steeped in history, including tunnels that were built in the 19th century when boats were pulled by horses instead of engines. You can still see where the horses' ropes cut into the stone. We found the Llangollen Canal to be particularly peaceful, with vast spaces of nature, rolling hills in the distance, and two famous aqueducts that we will be crossing later in this video. At certain magical points, there are lakes that border alongside the canal. We have been lucky enough to witness the leaves turning incredible colours of red and orange, and have enjoyed the transition of autumn into winter. The Llangollen Canal is popular in the winter not only for its beauty, but because it connects to a river. This means there's a constant flow which prevents it from freezing over in the winter time. It can be a nightmare when your boat is stuck in the ice. We've been travelling against the current however, which means we've been moving particularly slowly. What's she looking like today then? So we were cruising and we were going pretty slow, which is often is an indicator we've got something wrapped around our propeller. So to get to the propeller, I'm going to something called the weed hatch. The weed hatch gives us access to the propeller, but it's really important that it keeps locked up really tight because it's also the way that water could get into the boat and your boat could sink. So I'm going to unscrew the weed hatch, get my hand into the canal, be nice and cold, and Ooh. see if there's anything wrapped around the prop. I'm glad this is your job and not mine. I do go into the weed hatch, but Adam mainly does it. I think maybe I've been in there once <laughs> and he's been in there loads. Do you remember once when we were cruising on a river, there were so many reeds, we literally had to go in there every five minutes? Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, it was ridiculous. So, so we use these as kind of extra weights to make sure it's securely tied down. Not tied down, but you know what I mean? Weighted down. And then we got this thing. It's really tight. That's probably why I don't go in there because I can't undo it. You've made it really tight. So the first bit is really tight, then it's released. So you definitely want to make sure that you've not got your engine on <laughs> when you're doing something like this. Now this is the fun bit. Now where are you going to put that? Just put that there for a minute. And you can see the beautiful fresh canal water. Oh, beautiful. Oh, I'm trying to zoom in. This is my bad. Oh, look at that. Ready? Yeah. This is where I'm hoping you find something. Yeah, because otherwise why is she going slow? But so far, you kind of want to push her around like a fan to see if she moves easily. 
and if not there's usually something stuck but and on the the cylinder bit yeah i can't feel anything on there so it's just the current the current yeah. of the langolan canal the langolan canal is constantly flowing against us but i didn't think it would make that much of a difference but we're going very slow but you know slow and steady wins the race After finding nothing around the propeller, we reversed the process to make sure the weed hatch was securely tightened and continued our journey towards Chirk. In Chirk we were being joined by my oldest friend to officially cross the border into Wales and endure the first of the two infamous aqueducts. We're just checking out Chirk Aqueduct before we go over it on the boat making Lauren feel <laughs> a little bit nauseous <laughs> but we were I just looked over the edge but we were at a pinnacle Ooh. point because we are right on the border of England and Wales so if you can see on that sign it says welcome to England so as soon as you walk these footsteps <laughs> she's in England <laughs> she's in Wales she's in England she's in Wales she's in England We were blessed with clear blue skies as we approached the Chirk Aqueduct and the surroundings were breathtaking. The Chirk Aqueduct was designed by William Jessup and Thomas Telford and completed in 1801. It quite literally carries water from Wales into England. The aqueduct is 710 feet long and 70 feet high. We moored up for the evening and got the fire on and we decided to get the guitar out and be a little bit creative before crossing the second aqueduct the next day. So I'm going to be a bit vulnerable right now and I'm going to share a poem that I wrote a few years ago called Big People. I wrote it in India on a train and I don't recite my poetry that much but I want to start doing it more so I'm going to recite it to you so thank you if you're about to listen to this. It's not all fun and games, it's what they said when I was small. Please start acting more mature, they'd preach to me in school. Do what I say, not what I do, that's what the big people would say. Respect me because I am older and I'm guiding you the right way. But the big people, they don't smile, they have sadness in their eyes. The illusion of money and power so strong they can't even hear their own lies. But them I do not blame, as I know once they too were small. And they once had big people too, enforcing all of their rules. The religious man tells you how you should act, preparing for life after earth. But what if we're already in heaven, and you're not understanding your worth? The human mind, it holds so much power, evolved faster than all comprehension. Forgetting we too are just nature, but that's something big people don't mention. Born as a human for now, before I turn back into dust. So why should I act oh so serious? You guide me like it's a must. And maybe it does keep you normal. And maybe it does keep you sane. The distractions that blind you from your inner truth, but you might not get this chance again. Please stop asking my plans for the future. I follow my heart, not my mind. I'll stay wild and free like the ocean, because I know we're of the same kind. The constructed thought patterns of riches that was built by the big people too. But once you break down the walls of illusion, you see the wealth, it's all around you. The plants, they provide us our food and our medicine for if we get sick. The mountains and spring bring us water to wash and to swim and to drink. Our energy we get from the sun and the rainbow, it brings us the colour. So how can you say you're not rich when all is provided to you from the mother? So maybe I don't act so serious, I cosmically dance and I play. But one day if I'm a big person, 
I'll let the small ones do it their way. <laughs> it's a very exciting morning we're about to cross the world famous i think it's the highest aqueduct in the uk i think it is i don't really know Do how, you know how you... to pronounce it no the Pon Pontesil. Pontesil aqueduct uh yesterday we actually crossed the chirk aqueduct which was incredible we had a few friends come over we had such a good time it's really beautiful because you can actually see the viaduct as you're crossing the aqueduct it was so great it's, quite a, uh, it's very picturesque it's lovely i think it was one of my favorite experiences ever cruising the boat i actually didn't film that much because i was just trying to be really present in the moment but we did have a friend come and film some of it on a drone so yeah. But also halfway across, we realised it <laughs> the boat was almost going in reverse. <laughs> so we had to jump off with the ropes and start pulling her. There was someone behind us who kept saying, you're all right, you're all right, do you need any help? Yeah, what we've learned on this canal, <laughs> I think we mentioned before that there's a flow on this canal going the opposite way. And our engine is not up for it. She's really slow. Loads of boaters keep coming past being like, is everything all right? Have you guys broken down? We're like, no, she's just really slow. <laughs> but yeah. This, this is like been on our bucket list forever since we got the boat to do this aqueduct, so. We're about to do it. We're about to do it. We've sneakily crossed it by foot, haven't we? We have, but shh, don't tell anyone that. It's gonna be the first time we've ever seen it. Can't imagine what it's gonna look like. You ready? Yeah. Let's do it. Just about the bend. The Pontesilt Aqueduct, and yes, I'm aware I probably pronounced that wrong, is the longest and highest aqueduct in the UK and crosses over the Dee Valley. It's a Grade 1 listed building and part of a World Heritage Site. The aqueduct is 1,007 feet long and 126 feet high. This aqueduct is famous for having a sheer drop on one side, which we'd heard could be quite scary. Unfortunately, Lauren started to have a bit of a bad time as we started to cross. So I just had the most weirdest <laughs> experience. <clears throat> Adam actually left me um, to steer the boat whilst he took some pictures. <laughs> and I just, I was like, I can't do this because I just looked over that edge and you can see there's maybe like three inches of ledge there and then it's a sheer drop and like i can walk along this bridge and i'm fine like it's very tall but just like being on the boat i can't it's just i just started crying <laughs> like having a panic attack um but we're, we're moving <laughs> and it's absolutely gorgeous and adam's in control now <laughs> halfway across the aqueduct and just to show you why it seems a little bit scary is that's the only ledge across these beautiful fields but we're doing it because there's a wind and the current is strong we're actually literally not moving so we just met this nice couple and Lauren and him are gonna pull the boat a bit so we get some speed Kindness of strangers again, eh? Just approaching the end of the aqueduct. What an experience. I think Lauren had a bit of a wobble, but I had a great time. <laughs> Feel alive. Thank you so much for watching this video and we really hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to our channel and leave a comment below.